Hello, and welcome to this Analyst Angle. I'm Bob LaLiberté, Principal Analyst with The Cube Research. Today, I'm joined by Jim Winia, Director of Product Management, and Saurabh Kapoor, Director of Product Management and Strategy for Networking Software Solutions and AI Connectivity. So we all know that the rapid evolution and growing adoption of AI have significantly amplified the demands on infrastructure, and generative AI in particular is pushing the boundaries of what our technology can handle, requiring unprecedented levels of compute, storage, and network performance. So whether it's powering advanced data analytics, enabling autonomous systems, or enhancing customer interactions through intelligent chatbots, Gen AI's diverse and expanding use cases are placing intense pressure on IT infrastructure. So today we're going to explore how these growing demands are influencing infrastructure choices and driving technology purchases. We'll delve into the critical considerations organizations must address to stay ahead of the curve from the latest advancements to the essential role of AI-driven connectivity in modern data centers. So Jim and Sarab will share their insights on how companies can effectively scale their infrastructure to meet the challenges posed by Gen AI and ensure that they are equipped to support the future of AI-driven innovation. So welcome, Jim. Welcome, Sarab. Thank you, Bob. Great to be here. Thank you, Bob. It's good to be here uh, with you and Jim to discuss this very timely and important topic. And as you mentioned very rightly in that narrative, the demands on infrastructure have, have never been greater in the and the rise of generative AI is, is a key driver behind the ship. So looking forward to diving into these discussions today and sharing insights on how we are addressing these requirements at Dell and helping our customers stay upfront. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And certainly the, the topic of Gen AI is, well, you could say it's been a little bit popular this year, right? So the entire show season, right, everyone's been talking about it all spring. We've seen it pop up in a news cycle here or there right? Like every other day. Uh, and there's been a lot of product announcements. And so while a lot of the, the hype and the news all relates to GPUs, I'd like to focus our discussion more on that AI fabric that supports these environments. So we'll, we'll drill down a little bit more specifically in how to best support those environments. And perhaps we can start by describing how these Gen AI network environments specifically are different than a typical enterprise data center network and, and what the demands are on those. So Jim, I'm wondering if you could maybe address that. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, happy to uh, to, to jump in. You know, the changes in the network have been quite sudden and dramatic uh, compared to the measured linear growth uh, you know, of classic HPC solutions over the last decade. You know, the AI network has you know three, actually four diverse networks, as you mentioned, kind of built into it. Uh, that's the front, the back, the out-of-band network, the GPU connectivity bus, which has classically been in the server, but now is, is moving out. Um, you know, but keeping focus on the, the back end, you know, we now have a consistent demand connecting each GPU with 400 gig connectivity you know, info um, in that back end uh, fabric. 800 gig uh, solutions are in discussions and are starting to come to the forefront with, with you know, next-gen, near-gen solutions you know, rolling out here you know, imminently. Um, as next-gen GPUs are able to consume that bandwidth, uh, the network plan is already in place. You know, these are highly performant AI-tuned AI fabrics with enhancements to provide lossless performance at line rates. Uh, so this is where advancements such as adaptive routing with dynamic load balancing, you know, Rocky support, uh, cut-through switching, you know, all initially provided the necessary rel reliability uh, for I AI performance. Uh, but as the solutions have continued to upsize into truly massive models, you know, further enhancements in cognitive routing, you know, utilizing global load balancing and enhanced packet spray, you know, have really further extended the reach of today's AI fabric solutions to take advantage of this full radix of connect connectivity lanes. An example uh, of the rapidly expanding 800 gig uh, solutions is the commercial Z9864F you know, 64 ports of 800 gig, you know, switching based on the latest Broadcom Tomahawk 5, you know, uh, recently released from Dell Technologies. At the high end, it provides full 64 by 800 gig connectivity or 128 by 400 gig ports. You can see that the immense uh, capabilities that are coming out of uh, these uh, somewhat simple uh, but complex, uh, uh, you know, fixed config solutions. 
You know, so that support alongside the latest AI fabric uh, focus solution um, allows us now to, uh, at the speed necessary, uh, compete with you know congestion-free enhancement solutions uh, and roll that into um, these basic, um, also classic data center networking solutions. So while we're aiming at the the AI fabric, you know the the classic data center as you asked Bob, you know it inherits uh, the same features, it it gets uh, the same uh, enhancements that. Um, uh, are we we're, we're aiming towards the AI market, so it's a win-win. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know that that the really when I think about it, that compelling difference when you talk about the 400 gig and 800 gig, and it's not just that the additional bandwidth is needed, but it's also needed from the get-go, right? This isn't where you're tiering right. from gig switches into 10 or 25, 50, and into 100 up, you know, uplinks and things like that. You're talking about 400, 800 gig throughout the entire network from the from the GPUs right. all the way up through the network or down to the storage. So really a uh, very different architecture that's needed. And, you know, it also, you know, it seems we're at a little bit of a crossroads again with ethernet versus that other technology, right? right? Which the, the other technology du jour is InfiniBand. Um, so I thought it was interesting. We had actually just conducted some research and it showed that almost two thirds, I think it was 59% of enterprises say they would prefer to use ethernet. So, and, and why they chose that was because it's already deployed in their environments and they already have existing skill sets. Plus most of the large public cloud providers are also using it. So, Sarab, I'm wondering if you could dig into a little bit what Dell is offering for the ethernet based in this backend network, Gen AI backend networks. Sure. Yeah, no, that's that's a great question, Bob. And you're absolutely right that we're at a pivotal moment where Ethernet and Infinity Band, especially in the inter-context of generative AI workloads, is being discussed every day. Well, Infinity Band has been the go-to technology for low latency and high throughput environments. Ethernet continues to be the backbone of enterprise networks. And then this is due to its widespread adoption, familiarity, and then significant innovations that we have seen in the Ethernet ecosystem. And now at Dell Technologies, we've been long advocates of Ethernet. You know, we recognize its flexibility and scalability as key enabler for the next AI workload. Uh, we are actively championing Ethernet through our participation in Ultra Ethernet Consortium, where we are helping to define and drive the next wave of Ethernet innovations. This is the commitment to ensure that Ethernet continues to evolve that meets the demanding needs of AI and other emerging technologies. Like Jim mentioned, we have you know, high rate switching uh, platforms that are designed to support these massive scale and, and performance Gen AI requires. And the support for high density 400 gig, 800 gig platforms ensures that these data intensive AI workloads can be processed with speed and efficiency that these enterprises demand. In terms of the network enterprise cards, you know, we're offering a range of big solutions, Broadcom Thought 2, NVIDIA CX7, and a roadmap to future generation technologies there brought a, a lot of AI optimizations in our in Dell Enterprise Sonic distributions, you know, the Rocky support, priority flow control, enhanced transmission selection, hashing capabilities, weighted ECMP, and, and a lot of those capabilities that are needed to champion and support, you know, these large generative AI deployments. Um, and, and we're also doing a lot of work on the on the management and orchestration side. Uh, we introduced Smart Fabric Manager recently, which is a tool to help, you know, enable ease of, you know, infrastructure provisioning, management, monitoring, allowing enterprises to scale the generative AI infrastructures. And we have seen a lot of demand where, you know, some of these customers are also looking at DevOps technology like Ansible and, and other technologies to set up the infrastructure. So we have, you know, done a lot of integration work and offer, you know, a suite of partner solutions as well, like Beyond Edge and Octeta, to enable that choice of management orchestration and niche monitoring to provide that end-to-end -end infrastructure management and monitoring. Um, so while all of this is happening on the product side and the technology side, you know, we're keeping our ears to the ground, maintaining a close feedback loop with, with our customers through initiatives like the customer advisory boards, as that allows us to gather direct input uh, from these customers on, on their requirements, the way they're going about, you know, are deploying AI at scale. So in summary, I mean, Dell is, is very uniquely positioned to deliver these end-to-end -end infrastructures, right? For, for AI from, from compute storage to networking, we are fully committed to driving both InfiniBand and Ethernet technologies forward for the generative AI backend networks. 
And through our innovations, industry participation, product roadmap, customer engagement, uh, you know, our, our focus is to ensure that, you know, Ethernet not only meets uh, the needs, but also exceeds, you know, from our evolving demands of VR perspective. And, and by my count, you're still the only company that Jensen specifically said, go buy this technology. So exactly. you've got a little bit of a leg up there. Uh, one thing I wanted to focus on a little bit more, I know you and you being Dell have been actively involved in Sonic for a long time and promoting it and driving hardened solutions for organizations and enterprises to adopt. And I know it's been gaining adoption across enterprise data centers as well. But I'm wondering if you could provide maybe a little bit more detail about its role and value in these Gen AI backend environments as well, in these AI fabrics. Sure. Yeah, certainly. Sonic software for open networking, the cloud, uh, you know, is a brainchild of Microsoft and they contributed to the open source community in 2016. And we have seen increasing adoption of Sonic across tier two cloud providers, enterprise data centers, and its role in generative AI backend environments is, is becoming increasingly uh, more significant. At Dell Technologies, we have been leading and advocating for Sonic for the last seven years. We have been instrumental in evolving Sonic for enterprise use cases by continuously enhancing its features, hardening the platform, uh, providing comprehensive enterprise support. And our focus you know, has been to enable this technology for broader enterprise consumption and bring the best practices of these tier one and tier two cloud service providers to broader enterprise. In terms of generative AI, uh, we've done a, a lot of you know, key enhancements in that category, you know, bringing the Rocky V2 support, enabling priority flow control, enhanced transmission selection to enable ease of network congestion management and prioritize critical AI traffic, improving traffic management, reducing latency to features like explicit congestion notification, hashing capabilities, uh, optimizing load balancing uh, capabilities in the fabrics through dynamic load balancing, weighted ECMP, and the likes of those capabilities. So a lot of goodness coming in Sonic, but we have to realize that, you know, while we have the, the network operating system set right, you know, enabling orchestration solutions on top of that, you know, simplifies the fabric management capabilities. So we've been doing a lot of work in, in that side as well. And while we are enabling Sonic in, in our in the Dell distribution, we're also, you know, enabling, enabling the community by contributing our features and capabilities in a substantial way. So we actively participate in the Linux Foundation uh, Sonic project, you know, our, our representation of the governing board, technical sharing committee, and helping drive this platform for the next evolution of networking. And not just that, we're also consumers of Sonic in-house. And, you know, recently we, we deployed, you know, Sonic across the Dell IT ecosystem, which is, you know, probably one of the largest, you know, IT networks in the world across both AI and non-AI applications. So in summary, you know, we're doing a lot of extensive work with Sonic uh, enhancing its capability for generative AI environments and providing a robust, feature-rich, and enterprise-ready solution that is, you know, meeting the demands of AI yeah, workplace. Yeah, no, that's great to hear that you're continuing that development and adding those capabilities. And I think that's that's part of what, you know, we're going to see is going to be needed to handle the the pressure uh, that AI is putting on some of these environments. So it's great to hear that you're you're doing that. It's great to hear you contributing back to the open source foundation and, and making sure that you're not just keeping all these capabilities for yourself, but opening them up as well. So I think that's, that's really, uh, that's great. And I'm also glad to hear that you're focused on the orchestration piece, right? Because so many times we focus on the technology to enable it, but you know, to, for the implementation of it, but not the day two area of it, which as we all know, is going to be a big portion of what people have to spend their time on. So really excited to hear that's happening. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up, you know, a, an area of concern that I often hear when I'm talking to organizations is that, you know, while they know networking and they're familiar with Ethernet, they really don't have a lot of familiarity with these Gen AI environments. And so I'm wondering what Dell is doing to help accelerate the adoption of Gen AI for these enterprise environments. That is so important, Bob. If I could take this one, yeah. you know, Dell, Dell, we offer a, a library of validated designs, of preference designs, and pre-tested solutions. Uh, additionally, we have you know jump starts for content creation, code generation, uh, and digital assistance. You know, further, AI really needs a skilled team to succeed. Right? I mean, most of these deployments are just massive. Yeah, uh, and so 
you know, you need AI ready skills, you know, are in short supply in most organizations. So our extensive experience at Dell, you know, deploying AI at scale allows us to guide you through the, the AI journey uh, from strategy to implementation to management and scaling. You know, this comprehensive support represents the third layer of the AI factory, uh, ensuring that your AI initiatives are expertly managed and optimized. Uh, and this is often done using our professional services to AI, uh, specifically designed to, to address this area. Uh, I would recommend you check out uh, www.dell.com slash AI. Nice and easy uh, for uh, an enumeration of uh, these different resources that are available. Yeah, that sounds great, Jim. I appreciate you uh, putting that out there. I'll make sure I repeat it at the end, which is unfortunately now, that's all the time that we have for today. So I want to thank both of you for joining and being able to share all that great knowledge with all of our listeners. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. It was great to be here and uh, look forward to catching up again with more updates. From the state. Absolutely. And I also want to thank everyone for watching this analyst angle on how these demands of AI are impacting the infrastructure. And remember, for more information on Dell Technologies Network solutions for these AI fabrics, please make sure that you visit as as Jim highlighted uh, www.dell.com forward slash uh, AI. All right. So again, thank you. Have a great day.